Hi, in today's video, we'll be discussing four things mainly. What is GRE and its advantages? Your preparation for it. What is a good GRE score that will get you the best scholarships and the best universities? And the most important fact, is GRE more important than GMAT? I'm Abhinav Gugoy, your neighborhood counselor, and we are doing a study abroad series today about graduate research examination and how that will help you as a stepping stone for the best universities and for the best scholarships across the world. GRE, or the graduate research examination, is an internationally standardized test that will not only open the doors to your dream universities, but also will give you the opportunity to apply and get multiple different scholarships from the universities as well as government bodies and private foundations. GRE is conducted by ETS or Education Testing Service and most universities use this particular test to check your academic performance as well as your readiness for a graduate program and for some universities also for your integrated PhD programs or taught PhD programs. So advantages of the GRE exam and the most important advantage is that it is accepted widely. So the GRE exam is used by most universities in the US and Canada to understand the student's profile, academic competence, as well as readiness. However, there's also a lot of top business schools and law schools now accepting GRE students for their programs. How great is that? Two, GRE builds up your profile. Just in case you have a low GPA, then a good GRE score will compensate for that low GPA. So all in all, it gives very strong information to the universities of your overall aptitude and at that academic aptitude per se. And three, validity of the test. The GRE test is valid for five long years, which gives you ample time to decide on the countries that you want to apply to and the universities in those countries. Now, just in case there's some sort of emergency and you cannot go abroad for that particular year, then the long validity will help you apply once again you know, with your GRE score. Now, let's talk about how to go about preparing those great GRE scores. But before that, how about a like and a share? Do subscribe to our channel and please do comment as to what kind of topics you'd like us to talk about in the subsequent videos. So about your preparation, and I'll give you examples of how Inspire's education students prepare for the GRE to score more than 330 plus every single year. The very first thing that they all do is get a diagnostic score by doing a diagnostic test. Second, based on the diagnostic test, they set up a target score based on their aptitude in English and in math. Third, prepare a daily schedule or a routine, not just to clear your doubts or understand the concepts that is there for quant and for verbal, but also prepare a schedule for doing multiple different section-based tests as well as mock tests so that you can close the gap between your diagnostic score and your target score. Four, as soon as you have this schedule, you must definitely put into play timely practice tests in order to improve your score. Number five, as soon as you feel more comfortable based on your concept learning, your doubt solving, as well as you must have done at least five or six mock tests, then definitely choose a test date. And lastly, definitely expect the unexpected. You never know what might come up on the test day. There might be some issues, maybe like the pandemic, or you might feel a little unwell. Then in that case, if you don't feel right after coming out of the exam, definitely reschedule. Next, what is a good GRE score and what benefits come along with it? So a good GRE score is 320 plus, a better GRE score is 325 plus, and an excellent GRE score is 330 plus out of 340. If you can't, of course, go as far as achieving 340 out of 340. Now with this kind of excellent GRE scores, your admission to top universities are pretty much a surety. But along with having an admission offer letter from these top universities, you also get added benefits of maybe getting a scholarship or a good GRE score helping you put your application on a priority basis for the financial aid that you're applying for. Along with GRE, the other benefit is that a lot of top business schools as well as law schools are using GRE in place of GMAT 
which is primarily used for business school and GRE is being used in place of LSAT in order to get into top law schools in US and Canada. And this is not just restricted to US and Canada, but a lot of top European universities also, as well as Southeast Asian universities in Singapore and Hong Kong are also using these excellent scores to get admits to top universities as well as subsequent scholarships. So let's play a game. I'll give you four questions that you want to ask yourself and I would love for you to answer these in the comments below to judge whether you are fit for a GRE or a GMAT. Now, number one question, I'm focused only on business schools. Should I do GRE or GMAT? Number two, I'm focused on business schools, but I'm not so good at math. What should I choose? Number three, I don't want to get into a business school, but I'm definitely targeting an MS program. Do I need to take the GMAT or should I take the GRE? And number four, I want to keep my options open while I'm focusing on the MBA program. If I don't get to a good university, then I want to apply for an MS program. In that case, will a GRE help me or a GMAT help me? I'm looking for your answers in the comments below. Now, in order to help you answer those questions, I would want to highlight a few differences between GRE and GMAT that will help you choose whether you are fit for a GRE or a GMAT. Now, the biggest difference between the and the GMAT is in terms of adaptiveness. Now GRE, it is sectionally adaptive, while GMAT is question-based adaptive, which means that the section or the question gets progressively harder as you answer the correct question. Secondly, the GRE and the GMAT, they both obviously test your strength in verbal and quant. However, GRE's focus is much more in verbal and for GMAT, the focus is much more on quant, that is in a very generic sense. If we have to highlight the differences between the verbal section of both GRE and GMAT, GRE looks more particularly as vocabulary focused, while GMAT looks at it more in terms of grammar focused. In terms of math, calculators are allowed for GRE, while calculators are not allowed for GMAT. Now with these sort of differences, which do you think will fit you, a GRE or a GMAT? So my personal advice to you all, if you're choosing between GRE and GMAT, is if you're looking at the present situation with the acceptance of the GRE, which is more widely accepted for multiple different programs, not just in the field of MS, but also for business as well as law, then GRE is probably your best friend for the subsequent years if you want to do that. So keep in mind that a good GRE score will obviously make a lasting impression for the university counselors that are choosing you for those top universities. However, if your profile is not as strong otherwise, that means you don't have a good GPA or if you don't have strong essays or you don't have a good English proficiency test or good letters of recommendation, then definitely a strong GRE score will not help you out. So, Make sure that besides a good GRE score, your GPA is good and you have at least very good letters of recommendation and you've got yourself involved in multiple different projects and internships in order to put forward a very strong profile for a admit to a, one of the top universities in the US, Canada or anywhere across the world. And if you need individualized help and guidance to do this, to choose the universities, then please comment below with your phone number and your email address. I'll personally reach out to you or connect back with us through www.inspireseducation.com and a counselor will be promptly servicing you and your questions. <music>